Hello and welcome to Access Chat. Today we're doing an audio recording because of uh, bandwidth issues. Uh, I believe it's storming out in Virginia and uh, as a consequence, uh, video is a bit of a problem. But anyway, we're here today and we're delighted to welcome Alexandra Kutas, who is Ukraine's first model in a wheelchair and also advisor on disability and access issues to the mayor of her home city of Dnipro. So welcome, Alexandra. It's great to have you with us. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for your invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. So um, thank you for bearing with us with the, uh, the technical issues. I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, intrigued by the combination of job roles that you have. So can you tell us a little bit about how you managed to combine being both a, a model in a wheelchair and also your, your new role as advisor on disability issues and accessibility? Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. It's very important. It's both of these topics are very important for me, and I believe that success is about combining them. I started, of course, you know, everything started with my love to photography, and because, you know, when I was 16, I fell in love with the process of photo shoot and decided that I really want to become the model, even though at that moment there was no uh, fashion model in, in a wheelchair. But anyway, I believe that, you know, if you have a passion and photography became a huge passion for me, that no disability should stop you. And then, you know, after I've tried to write letters with my photos to different agencies and all of them told me no, because they said we don't, we never signed a contract with a model in wheelchair, so we don't really know how, you know, like we think that market is not ready. That's the line I've heard a lot. I, you know, went to the university and decided to do a lot of other stuff in my life. And I would say the change point for me was I never believed that Ukraine is actually can be accessible country because since I was a child, uh, Ukraine was always inaccessible. But uh, two years ago, when uh, the war started between Russia and Ukraine, and my city is really close to the war zone, we like 200 kilometers away, and a lot of injured soldiers are coming first to our hospitals. And I went there to volunteer as a psychologist at the first months of the war, and then I met you know, a lot of amazing people, soldiers, who became people with disabilities due to, due to you know, injuries. And I realized that I'm a girl and I'm used to, you know, asking for help to move around the city and so on. And for the man who was, you know, fighting for his own country, risking his life, right now it's just, you know, ridiculous that he can't moving around in a wheelchair just on the street of his city. And I realized that, you know, something should be done about it. And due to revolution, we started to have this mood, you know, in the country that we can make a change. So I applied for a project management school. And uh, there I had a team and we started to write a project about accessibility. That's where first time I realized that I really want to do something about it. And um, we, you know, we represented the project. Uh, they said that our project was the best project in this, in this school. But, uh, you know, as usually in government, they say, like, we don't have money to do that. It was two years ago. So, and then my uh, modeling career started to grow. And I just decided to focus on that for some time. But still, in back of my mind, I was keeping that I really want especially when I become more, when I became more a media person due to my modeling, I was talking all the time and in all interviews and presentation I had about importance of accessibility in Ukraine. And we had elections of the mayor last year. And I, you know, I read his program and I felt like maybe this person would be more interested in making real changes on this topic. So I started to write to his team representing my project and this year we finally managed to meet each other and 
he asked me would I like to be an advisor on these issues in my city. That's 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 fantastic. So I'm I'm always curious about how people deal with the the financial objections because we all experience them. Um, so so what were the things that that turned it around because everyone gets told you know the market's not ready the don't think there's enough budget for this that the other how did you deal with with that what what was it that that changed people's minds or was it just your persistence about what modeling or accessibility uh, well no with the ex well we could we could cover both but but with the accessibility issue in particular with accessibility well i think a lot of uh a lot of things. First, timing is right. You know, right now we are in that moment that actually people, new people in governments are willing to make a change. Then, uh, due to the war and so injured soldiers who became people with disabilities, people just already can't say that, you know, people with disabilities don't exist in our country as it was in the USSR. Also, thanks to my media support, you know, because all newspapers, TV channels in Ukraine know me because of my modeling. So, you know, combining of all of these things, and also other people started to be more interested in these topics because people realized that accessibility, it's not only about people with disabilities, also about moms with children, for them, it's much more convenient with the ramps around places. And right now, since I became an advisor, it's kind of funny because I'm um, really often I meet mothers with the children, and they asking me like, when finally we will be accessible city? Because I don't know, like we want it even more, I guess, than you know, we really want it. Yeah. So Deborah, I think you've got a question. Yes. So, Alexandra, thank you for being on the program. We were really excited about having you on today. Um, I, I am curious about, you know, your life and, you know, um, growing up as a child in the Ukraine in a wheelchair. I mean, I'd like to know a little bit more about um, how you came, you know, how you start. <clears throat> sorry. I, uh, you know, more about your uh, your life before you became a model. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, I'm very grateful and lucky about my parents because, uh, you know, when I was six years old, I was a super shy kid. And I remember how I was afraid to raise my hand on the lesson in the school, you know. And uh, But my parents, my mom actually decided, my grandparents were really, really afraid to let me go to regular school. Uh, it was not inclusive school, it was just a school with uh, all kids. And there was no ramp, nothing. But my mom it used to study there, so she knew a lot of teachers. And she said, you know, I really want you to go to just regular school. And I was studying pretty well. I had amazing, you know, classmates, really nice teachers. I remember a lot of good stuff about my school years and uh, I was living not so far away uh, just like you know five minutes walk of course I couldn't unfortunately go to the school by myself but uh, you know always someone from my family was going just to take me there and uh, bring me home and um, I never had any problems with my classmates I still have friends from school so I really, right now, one of my priorities uh, while I'm working with the mayor, we just talked with him about it today, and I'm going to write a program about making schools accessible and inclusive, because I believe that experience of a child just being, you know, around other kids and going every day to school changed my life and made me, you know, who I am right now. It was at least definitely a good start for that so I want to do my best 
that for the budget of next year, the government will give the money to schools to make them accessible, at least a few of them, because right now we have none. Um, Alexandra, whenever, if you send me an email, I can send you a couple of reports that I've written on education. And also uh, G3ICT did a really good uh, report on how necessary it is to have inclusive education. So we're happy to share some resources that um, we've already published that, that might be helpful. I would love to, because especially right now, I need to explain in the right way you know, how many schools, which ones, you know, exactly why them? Because, for instance, right now I know for one school already because I know that there are three kids in wheelchairs studying there. Uh, so for one, I know for sure, but I want to make more as, you right. know, as, I agree. as, more as possible. So this is it, it's always... critical to add educate people yeah it's critical to educate people no, go my, ahead Neil my, my question was uh, going to, to that direction um, do you have any contacts with with uh, local universities is there is there a space for for universities and research centers to be able to to collaborate with you or at least to use the energy of university students uh, at least to do s s some work uh, and and to enable them to, to, to be part of this process. Yeah, thank you for your advice. That's definitely what I'm going to be doing. We have a lot of problems about universities in terms of having inclusive education uh, for universities. I was studying in the university, but uh, my faculty was on the fourth floor with no elevator. But still, I was going there every day and my group mates were helping me to go downstairs and to go upstairs. So right now we're still friends and when we talk, sometimes I'm joking that, you know, like you owe me money because you didn't have to go to the gym. You were like hauling me <laughs> to go downstairs and upstairs on the fourth floor every day. But uh, you know, we joke like that, but it's kind of a horrible situation with the universities in my city. And there is no, you, uh, you know, wheelchair accessible, there is no accessible university. So right now, I'm, I, but I would really want to involve students for different projects, especially students who are working as architectures. Yeah, I think that's, that's a, a great point. Um, that Antonio raises, and and uh, I think there's also opportunities for sharing across academic institutions. So um, we're we're on good terms with a number of uh, really influential institutions across the globe. Deborah's been you know very friendly with Georgia Tech that specialise in accessibility. I'm very friendly with the Helen Handman Center, which is part of the Royal College of Art. These guys specialise in inclusive design there's going to be lots of materials that, that we can share and I'm, I'm also sure that a lot of these organizations want to uh, collaborate as much as possible internationally so um, I think there's the scope there and I, and I think that um, it's in, in some ways being a long way behind is also quite an exciting place to be because I've worked in environments where you're in a sort of market leading position or you're in sort of about the same point as the rest of the world in, in your sort of levels of maturity and and there's a certain amount of staidness people you know don't want to rock the boat but when you're coming from so far back when when the situation is that nothing's ac accessible there's an enormous amount of room for innovation so i think i think that what you're doing is really exciting uh, uh, very keen to try and find ways to support you and, and, and shout about what you're doing. I also I also know that um, that you featured in the British press. Um, I saw that you'd been in the Daily Mail. Yeah, yeah, that that article actually changed my life. So tell us a bit about that. So uh, how did well, it come about? <laughs> it's kind of funny story because uh, you know and just one thing I wanted to add about education yes yeah, sure. 
that right now I'm, you know, we have, I know that there is Coursera website, I'm sure you heard about it, with free yeah, cool. online courses. And there is prototype of Coursera Ukrainian online resource with the different um, uh, online courses. And I really want, right now, I'm in the touch with the uh, man who actually created this website for Ukraine. And I asked him, would be possible to create online course about universal design? Because, you know, if we have this, it would be really, really great to promote universal design among Ukraine. So if there are, you know, any uh, experts in universal design who would be interested in giving like a guest lecture for our future online course right now I'm working on uh, you know uh, with the person who's going to actually creating the course but I would really love to involve different foreigner experts in this area because I know there are a lot of amazing people who know a lot of stuff about universal design so then you know we could promote it because right now the problem here is also that you know architectures universe uh, universities who teach architectures are not so much aware about universal design principles and I really want to raise that and change it uh, Alexander is uh, language English uh, a barrier when it comes to that or, or people would prefer to have uh, these courses in in your native language can, can you explain us about that because there's a lot what you just told us about there's a good a good number of those courses already available online and in in English so this will be a kind of a, a double effort uh, unless of course if there's a language barrier uh, well there is a language barrier unfortunately a lot of people in Ukraine don't speak English but actually if you could uh, please share with me where to find this uh, courses maybe we could try to find volunteers to translate it okay well we can definitely share with you after after this links to various courses and, and resources and everything else that would be lovely uh, and of course we've got about 60 hours worth of of video and, and audio interviews just on access chat alone with people talking about it which of course is free to anyone you know take the material you know do with it as you will you know we, we we're here to to share knowledge that's and awesome. encourage people that's really that would be amazing and about your question for daily mail article it's kind of funny story behind it because i remember one time my friend, I don't remember who exactly, told me that you're a model, you're supposed to have an Instagram. And I was like, but I'm not so into this. You know, I have a Facebook, but I'm not into Instagram. But he said, like, if you are a model, you should have it. So I downloaded and I started to post some pictures with the hashtags. And also I left in descriptions in description about myself that, you know, I'm a Ukraine first fashion model in a wheelchair and my email and later on I got an email from the lady and she was saying that she's a journalist from New York and she found me through the Instagram and she would love to have an interview and because I speak English fluently we just agreed to have an interview next day and that's how <laughs> you know there was an article about me in Daily Mail because then later on I found out that she was writing for Daily Mail no, that that's interesting and and brings the value of, of social media for this type of stories because more and more people today are, are trying to find stories uh, around the world and they will just use social media to find interesting people so apparently that was the case and that that looks like a, a great example about how to use social media to find uh, information so it's uh, well done yeah you know it was kind of a moment in my life when I was studying at university you know when you're in the country where actually you can't meet people in wheelchairs on the street and you are willing to be a model and there is actually even no model at, at that point there was no model in the world in wheelchairs that was kind of you know a moment when I had to admit to myself of that that's actually what I wanted to do and it was not easy 
a little bit, you know, to say even to people I know that, you know, I want to be a model. But when I overcame it, kind of opportunities started to come. I, I know Deborah. So, Alexandra. Yeah. yeah. Go on, Deborah. <clears throat> Thank you. So, Alexandra, you know, if you could look into the future and um, and see that your best wishes for the Ukraine and it being fully accessible for people in wheelchairs and other people with disabilities in the Ukraine, you know, what are your wishes for the future? What do you wish, you know, that the leaders would do? What do you wish your fellow citizens would do? And also what other people could do as well? What are your greatest wishes and dreams for the work that you're doing right now? Well, I, I do want to that everyone has an opportunity. That's what I want the most because, you know, I, I know for how many things I had to go through, my parents had to go through, and people, other people, successful people with disabilities say no in Ukraine, how difficult it is. And I really want, you know, I meet kids with disabilities, and they're so amazing, and they look so full of energy and what I really want that you know if they have any dreams that they believe that it's possible to make them true and they will make them true and my job as an advisor and as a you know fashion model is actually to prove it and as an advisor to do my best to convince all the you know, people in government, that's, that's the thing, wor that's, it's worth to do that. And it's important to do that. So people will have a chance to actually you know, be who they want. Yeah. I think I, well said. Well I, said. I, it's fantastic to, you know, the, the role you're playing as a, a role model. Um, I think there, there are a couple of things that, that spring to mind. Last year I think it was there was a controversy about one of the Jenner girls um, being doing a photo shoot in a wheelchair which was just sort of done thoughtlessly um, do you think that, that the the backlash from from that all thought out photo shoot has actually had a positive effect on on the work that you're doing because it's brought attention to you being you know, being a wheelchair uh, in a wheelchair and, and being a model um, for real rather than playing at it yes I you know I believe this was kind of very important to realize that you know my wheelchair is not something what's getting me you know down because model it's actually because why I'm also unique and uh, I'm still kind of looking forward to find a designers who will look at the wheelchair as an accessorize which you know can make person even look looking even better yeah interesting and you you're running a you, you've got a, a, a campaign going which is a, I think I'm, am I right in saying breaking Breaking Your Chains? Uh, breaking Your Chains, it's the first ever in Ukraine photo exhibition with the first Ukraine fashion model in the wheelchair. And what's very make me happy is that uh, we made this exhibition a year ago and it has been traveling around the Ukraine. It has been also at Ukrainian Fashion Week. And people keep inviting us you know for instance in the next month we are going to a different city with this exhibition and we're just talking uh you know showing the photos and talking about equality in general equality of opportunities for different kinds of people because right now besides uh you know people with disabilities there are also a lot of people who came from the war zone and they have a lot of difficulties as well. Uh, you know, they changed the, the place they were living. They, you know, don't feel comfortable. It's very difficult for them to find a job, to find a place to stay. So we're actually talking about, you know, being being connected society, which is helpful for each other, which stands for each other, and um, trying to give, you know, 
equal opportunities, no matter of what kind of background you have. I, I think that's tremendous, and, and I think the other thing is that that you're going to have a lot of in in a, in a country that's been in conflict is a lot of hidden disabilities and, and post-traumatic stress. So um, I know that with your like psychologist background, you'll be aware of the impact of hidden disabilities as well as uh, physical disabilities. So yeah. what, are, yeah. what are the sort of plans that you have to, to address some of that, um, as well as the, the sort of physical access? Are there, are there things that you can do, are there opportunities that you can see um, relatively soon within Ukraine to help um, with some of these hidden disabilities as well? Oh, well, I'm I'm pretty much aware about mental health health issues in my country, and um, you know I I don't want to try to do everything and do nothing at the same time. So I believe that if actually we will be able to make a big change for physical accessibility and for people who are physically disabled, it's going to be already a huge success. But about the mental health, I know a lot of uh, psychologists and groups of psychologists who are working right now and who are helping, uh, for instance, uh, soldiers who came from the war zone. So people are working on this, but still, of course, our, our mental health you know, issues need a lot of, lot of work on, and um, I do believe that with with the time, uh, you know, in government, it's going to be people who are going to be very interested in improving this side as well. But for right now, I feel responsible for accessibility, physical accessibility, and I really want to change something about that, and then we can see about you know future. That's understandable, and, uh, and we have an expression which is called, uh, you know, trying to boil the ocean. Yeah, exactly, uh, because something actually started just like month or month and a half since I, I'm advisor on, only for a month. Sure. And it's actually just something starting here, and we have a long way ahead of us. But I do want everything make you know, as fast as possible, as soon as possible, because I have also other projects, you know, and I can't be young forever. And, you know, I want to be a model while I'm young. Absolutely. While you are no, uh, doing that, have you uh, end up in situations where you, the fact that you are a model and you are uh, uh, with a wheelchair where other, other girls and other uh, uh, man uh, end up coming to you. You know, we, I would like to do this. I would like to be. You know, I would also uh, w would like to do modeling, or I would like to help in 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 terms of accessibility. Do you have any of those stories? Uh, actually, right now I know there I there is a girl in Kiev. I met her personally, and she is right now also uh, trying. You know, building her portfolio, and I'm really really happy about that so there are girls who also after seeing my example started to believe in themselves which is amazing uh, feeling and about um, accessibility well just a week ago I was holding a round table in a government building we were because I decided to you know find all people who are interested in accessibility and who, you know, NGOs, uh, people who are working with NGOs and just different activists who would love to make a change about it and brought them together and see, because, you know, I'm a single person, what can do a single person, right? So I believe uh, I see my role also as a person who can connect NGOs, activists and governments government have to kind of listen to me because of my media role because I'm known in Ukraine and uh, activists having amazing ideas some of them having uh, you know great projects and I'm so happy that just today I had a chance to you know introduce one to mayor to one um, 
lady, she's running an NGO, and she has a lot of wonderful ideas. I'd love her to, you know, make true, and I will help as much as I can. So uh, I see that right now more and more people are interested in accessibility, people who are even not connected with people with disabilities. They just believe it's a very important topic. I, I, I know that that's, that's a, a very good number of uh, companies who have software de- who work with software developers from Ukraine. So and they yeah. are they are also very well known per, for the quality of their code, and there's and there's also a long tradition in engineering in Ukraine. So I, I think the the fact that there already is, exists this type of foundations, I think it will be it wouldn't be difficult for software developers to work with government to make sure that they have their websites accessible and, and the same for other Ukrainian institutions. I hope so, yeah. And, uh, and of course, you know, we want it to be that we really focused on the physical and the built barriers and stuff, as you talked about earlier, at Alexandra. So I think that I know I work, do a lot of work with the United Nations. And one thing that the United Nations is trying to figure out is how can they help countries, especially countries that are developing or are in war torn situations, how can they help them? you know, implement the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and really make sure that people with disabilities are being included in all aspects of society. And the built, you know, you can get in buildings, you can get in schools, you can have access to technology, communications, the internet. Uh, There's a lot of moving parts, but we're seeing the countries that start with advocacy and the grassroots systems, a lot of times we're seeing a lot of successes affiliated with that, but all of the stakeholders have to get involved. The government, the corporations, the employers, the, all the different moving parts. And um, as we've said on this interview, you know, the three of us have a lot of experience and the Access Chat community has a lot of experience that we're, you know, would be happy to share with you. And I know I would be happy to be one of your speakers. I'm sure Neil would be as well. Um, and I know um, Antonio is just brilliant when it comes to so many of these social media um, discussions um, and access and things like that. So I think you're doing the right thing, and it's, it's exciting watching you um, really find your own and uh, make a difference for your country and others. So congratulations. Thank you so much. You know, I was just amazed when I started to ask for help from different experts on accessibility stuff. I was just amazed how people are, you know, getting back to me so fast and they're willing to have. It's it's really, really important because, you know, I, I don't have that much experience at all in this area. So I definitely need advice and you know, of experts. So thank you so much. Uh, but uh, I think that's one of the nice things about the accessibility community is that it's full of people that are also passionate and so we are here to help and we are uh, all wanting to pull together to, to create that better world. So uh, we're with you all the way. Thank you very much. We've reached the end of our, our half hour now. So um, it's been a delight talking to you and I look forward to joining you on Twitter tomorrow night for access chat thank you thank you so much thank you for that thank you thank you